So in this video, I want to show you how to make a uh, bi-quad antenna just like this one, but in the video we're going to make a double bi-quad antenna. Now, uh, this particular one is one that I made for a uh, company that approached me wanting some unique antennas to uh, put in their uh, high-end luxury uh, apartments that they had built. There were apartments inside uh, quite a large uh, barn conversion and uh, I made them these uh, single bicord antennas so they could get the internet, uh, the Wi-Fi uh, all around the uh, apartments themselves because each apartment was connected with uh, uh, Lexus and uh, they were controlled in the lights and everything else and uh, the normal uh, antennas that they could purchase uh, were just not doing the job and they also wanted something to uh, look nice as well so this is the actual prototype that I uh, made for them and I uh, showed them in a meeting and I uh, ended up making uh, 30 of these for uh, the particular company uh, they use these and an omnidirectional uh, antenna that uh, somebody else had uh, put together for them and uh, they did look quite good in uh, you know when they were uh, positioned uh, around the barns they did look uh, you know quite uh, uh, you know the they were looking for something quite unique and a one-off and uh, they certainly uh, did uh, do that and they're quite happy with them but uh, unfortunately I can't show you pictures of them uh, in situ as it were um, and I can't tell you uh, anything about the company either that's uh, one of the things a lot of these companies uh, ask that uh, you don't uh, put their name out there but uh, what I've decided to do is uh, show you how to make a double backward one of these I think that uh, this particular design I really do like it uh, I might possibly make some of these in the new year to sell on eBay so this double uh, bi-quad then is going to be based around this uh, aluminium tubing here. Uh, I've got some uh, aluminium tubing that's uh, 63 millimeters in diameter and I cut it in half and uh, we're going to use one of the halves here to make the uh, double bi-quad. Now normally uh, I would have ordered uh, some tubing and shown you how to cut it in half as well um, but uh, unfortunately it's the day after Boxing Day even if I ordered it today probably wouldn't arrive to the new year so this is the only piece that uh, I have got left so that's what we're going to base our double bike wood on now of course because uh, it's the only piece I've got um, I've got to be really careful and not make a mistake as far as the single bi quad one goes I uh, got the method of construction down on that one but uh, with the double bi quad it's very similar to the construction that I use on the single one but there are going to be some differences so if I make a mistake then uh, you're not going to see this video until the new year when I order some more parts but uh, the length of uh, this tubing is uh, 200 and 10 millimeters long so that gives me uh, plenty enough length to uh, construct the uh, double bi quad inside here you could probably go down to uh, 200 millimeters and still fit the double bi quad on the inside here but uh, i'm going to go with this and uh, i've got a piece of brass here it's uh, 0.5 millimeters uh, in thickness and that's going to go on the back and i'm going to do a lot of my working out <coughs> excuse me on the back of the brass here the holes that I'm going to drill for the uh, elements and everything else because what we're going to do is rivet this to the uh, back of the uh, half tubing here the aluminium tubing and we're going to do that just so we can solder onto the brass it's just the easiest way I came up with uh, to construct this uh, you know with taking into account that we can't solder to the aluminium so a lot of the working out is going to be doing on the brass and then I'm going to rivet it in place and then construct the uh, bicord elements uh, directly onto the brass itself going through the uh, aluminium uh, reflector here so on the piece of brass then I've marked out where I want to drill the holes for uh, the rivet so I'm going to drill one here one here and one here and one here and uh, I'm going to rivet that on to uh, the aluminium tube in itself uh, you're going to probably want another hole here and here but I'm going to leave that later because uh, what I'll be doing is uh, securing the uh, little supports for the elements through there and that will hold uh, the back of the uh, brass uh, plate to the uh, 
in all the tubing here so it won't be riveting that in place but I'll uh, drill those holes later when I get the uh, element made up and also uh, I've marked out two holes here and here uh, to connect to the uh, biquad element if I flip it over I've uh, hole punched them at the back so you can see it a little bit more clearly there but uh, slightly wider holes here and here for the uh, rivets and I've got a little uh, I think this is about three mil three millimeter wide uh, drill bit here for the elements so slightly smaller holes for the elements although I'll probably be making one a little bit bigger because uh, we'll be securing the uh, coax in place with some uh, tubing but I'll show you that later down the line but uh, for now I'm going to drill the holes for the rivets and then uh, line it up on the uh, aluminium tubing drill through uh, one at a time there and rivet it onto the back and the two holes here and here so now that I've got all the holes drilled into the brass strip, what I'm going to do is eyeball it to get it nice and straight in the centre of the reflector. I'm going to hold it in place with some masking tape and I'm going to drill the holes for the rivets first, rivet it in place and then we can uh, get to work on the rest of the antenna. So I'm just going to be drilling the four holes for the rivets just to get it held into place. So I'm happy that I've got the strip nice and straight down the uh, middle here and uh, held it in place with masking tape as you can see and now what I can do is use the uh, brass strip as a template, a jig if you will, to uh, help guide where I'm going to drill the holes through here and here and then I'm just going to rivet it in place and then I can remove the masking tape. So that's the rivets in place and I decided uh, if you have a look uh, at this first one that I ever made I did the rivets the other way around the best side is on the outside here and uh, I just uh, cleaned up the uh, opposite side on the inside of the element there but uh, on the ones that I actually made I uh, did it this way around so I had the neatest side on the inside here where the element is and uh, what I'll do I'll just clean up uh, this side uh, later on in the build just before I apply paint now what I'm going to do next, I'm going to solder on one of these uh, little right angle brackets. I've already uh, threaded it out uh, to the uh, exact thread of uh, a tripod. And uh, what I'm going to do is solder that in place at that position there and that way we can add a tripod. I've decided to solder this in place rather than rivet it in place. Uh, it should look neater by the time I've uh, painted it all and it'll give it a nice strong connection to this uh, brass plate as well. And that's the, one of the main reasons why I've added this brass plate just so it makes it a lot easier in the build that you have got the option to uh, solder things in place. So I'm now preparing the uh, length of coax that we're going to use to connect to this uh, antenna. I've got uh, just under 400 millimeters of coax here and I've already crimped on a uh, SMA connector onto the end there. I've got a length of uh, copper tubing. This copper tubing is uh, four millimeters in diameter. I've uh, cut it off at 15 millimeters, but that's not a specific uh, length that you have to follow. It uh, doesn't, uh, you know, uh, mean anything to the antenna at all and uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I've prepared the coax here I've also left 15 millimeters of the uh, inner core of the coax exposed here that will give me plenty when I've got this in place with the driven element to uh, chop it back to the desired length that I need and uh, I've cut away most of the outer braid and I've just left a little bit here and what I'm going to do is solder this copper tubing onto that braid there just like so and then we'll solder this onto the uh, body of the antenna you've got to be careful don't get too much heat in there for too long otherwise you'll melt the uh, dielectric insulator so I've drilled the holes on the back of the reflector now and uh, I've drilled a 4mm hole here so we can fit the uh, copper tubing through there and I've drilled a smaller hole here just because uh, you know it's smaller we're only going to attach the uh, brazing rod that I'm going to be using for the uh, driven element through that hole but uh, I'm going to insert this through here now leave about 5mm uh, protruding on this side like so and uh, now is where the uh, brass uh, plate comes into play as well because now we can solder this copper tubing directly onto this brass plate so then we've got a nice secure connection then and you can see it sticking through 
on the opposite side as well. So we've got a good solder connection there to the uh, brass plate and the copper tubing and the tubing comes through here also making a good connection to uh, that aluminium as well so what I'm going to do now is uh, paint this before we move on to the next stage of adding the driven element. So while the paint's drying on the reflector we're going to get on with making the uh, double biquad element. Now I've chosen to make this from uh, brazing rod purely because it's a lot more versatile than copper it's uh, stronger it's got a bit of a springiness to it as well so it'll be a lot more resilient to uh, you know damage and dropping um, now we're going to have to make the element in two halves normally I would use a length of uh, copper wire double the length of this brazing rod this brazing rod is uh, just over 300 millimeters long I can't get this brazing rod any uh, longer than this well I can't find any on eBay anyway and I don't have it here in my lab at the moment um, so I'm going to make it in two halves now to uh, actually construct this element we're not going to be measuring each quarter wavelength as we go along I've made myself a little tool here with uh, the measurements uh, the quarter wavelength down this side and the half wavelength that we're going to need down this side now the uh, measurements that I've based the uh, uh, quarter wavelength length on is uh, 31.25 millimeters I find that's the best measurement to make a uh, biquad with it does differ between designs you know don't get me wrong I uh, use a slightly different uh, measurement for the cantennas for instance but this tends to uh, put the biquad firmly smack in the middle of the spectrum that we use for Wi-Fi so that's why I use 31.25 so if you've never made uh, one of these before it's a good idea to get a uh, image of the double biquad off the internet print it out and have it in front of you just to uh, make sure that you follow that just so uh, you don't get mixed up and even me uh, if I haven't made one of these uh, in a while I will uh, get a uh, PCB out like uh, this PCB here and just put it at the end of the bench there just so I can follow it so I uh, don't make a wrong turn with the uh, bending of the wire here but uh, to start off with I'm not going to do any kind of measurement here I just want to leave myself enough uh, length here that's uh, definitely more than 15 millimeters and you'll find out why that's important when we come to uh, connect uh, the element to the uh, reflector but uh, just make sure that it's more than 15 millimeters so I've probably got a good 25 millimeters here and I'm going to put my first right angle bend in there and by the way these um, uh, pincers here these uh, long needle nose pliers I've had these for a long time I've got a second pair of these as well um, I uh, put some links in some of the older bikewad videos on where you could get these but uh, those links are now dead I really uh, want to find out uh, you know if anybody's selling these either on eBay or on Amazon they're made by Royston and uh, they really are my favorites just because they've got this big uh, surface area here that's nice and flat so it makes it really easy to put uh, right angle bends into this but uh, you know any kind of uh, needle nose pliers or pliers will work it's just that this has got a nice big surface area so if you can find these they're only cheap they're only about four pounds um, you know get yourself a pair because they're really good for uh, building antennas and not just the bike one either so now that we've got our first bend in there I've got my measuring tool here and I've butted it up against this uh, first bend here I'm going to take my needle nose pliers butt that up against the other side of the measuring tool remove the tool and I'm going to put another right angle bend in this time going uh, this direction here So we've now got it looking like that. So for the next bend then we're going to need the half wavelength. So again, measuring tool, put it up against that bend there. Get my pliers, put that up against that side. Remove the tool and I'm going to bend in this direction now. So you should have something looking like that. Just tidy that to bend up, get it as close to a right angle as you can like that so the next bend is a quarter wavelength my measuring tool 
put it up against the side there and I'm going to bend in this time. You can tidy up your right angle bends a little bit uh, when you come to uh, construct the element together but uh, you can see that the element's starting to take shape now. So we want another quarter wavelength here. And I'm going to bend inwards. So now we're going to do a half wavelength measurement again. So measuring tool, my pliers butted up against that side. And I'm going to bend inwards like so. And now we want a quarter wavelength measurement, so I'll get my tool, put it up against there, and I'm going to bend downwards this time. So pliers up against that side and bend down. And that's one half of the element completed. So now I just need to repeat this for the opposite side. So one thing that I uh, forgot to add when I was making this is uh, a small length of heat shrink tubing because you want to put it in between uh, where the two elements cross here so they don't short each other out. So I've got some heat shrink tubing here. I just want a small piece because I want it to fit on the uh, underside of this, just underneath there. I don't want it to uh, spoil the uh, aesthetics of the antenna too much, so just a short piece. It's still possible to uh, pop this over the elements even when you've uh, got it bent but it just makes it a little bit easier to do it while you're bending it. So I'm not going to fit it into place yet, I'm just going to leave it like that loosely and I'm going to uh, shrink it and fit it into place when we've got uh, the elements in place as well. So next I'm going to join these uh, two elements together. So to help me I've uh, got this uh, thick piece of uh, wood here and uh, I've drilled four holes pretty close together as you can see here so I'm going to use it as a jig to uh, hold my uh, elements together while I uh, am free to solder them up so it'll get it in a position where we can organize it so it's nice and straight hold it down with some masking tape and then we can go ahead and flood solder on these here to join the two halves together I'm also going to push this heat shrink tube in out of the uh, way a little bit as far away from there as possible because I don't want it to shrink prematurely because the heat will travel up here so let me get some masking tape I'll uh, arrange this so I'm happy that it's nice and straight and then we can solder the two halves together so you can see that I've got the elements now uh, strapped down in the jig but uh, before I solder these two together I've uh, wrapped some uh, thin wire around uh, this uh, side here with these two elements and I've done that just prior to soldering I've got the wire from uh, some uh, inner braid of the uh, coax here I'm going to do the same on the opposite side as well just to uh, tie it in uh, like I have here and uh, the reason I'm doing that is because when we remove this from the jig we're going to have to uh, solder this in place and because uh, you know it will carry the heat along uh, the wire here because uh, it's got copper inside and brass and uh, the good thermal conductors you can if you're uh, not too careful uh, desolder these two away because uh, it's quite springy as I said uh, when uh, we decided to use this as the uh, uh, wire for the uh, elements and because it's got that springiness to it uh, a little bit of heat in, in uh, this area here will uh, pull these two solder points away so a little bit of thin wire here just to uh, tie it into position will uh, help stop that happening as I say from uh, experience of doing uh, different designs like this before it's really easy to get frustrated get a little bit too much heat in there and it'll just break apart so I'm just going to tie some wire around this here now and then we can flood both of these with some solder So we're going to solder one side up first. So get some heat onto those elements there. And then feed in some solder. And then 
do the same on the opposite side. So I'm now removing it from the jig and I can tidy that solder point uh, up a little bit with the Dremel tool just to make it nice and neat and tidy. So before I uh, solder the element in place I need to drill the two holes for the supports at either end. This is a hole going to be drilled through the uh, reflector here. So I've got my uh, digital calipers here and I'm just measuring from the uh, rivet there to the edge of this element here on the end and uh, I'm measuring 36.9 millimeters so I'm going to uh, remove the element get my ruler draw a nice straight line through here uh, put a dot 36.9 millimeters and drill a hole through for the support and I'm going to do the same at the opposite end as well so I've got the two posts in place now and these posts are 15 millimeters long because the element itself wants to be 15 millimeters away from the uh, back here because this is curved that changes a little but that's the furthest point away 15 millimeters where these rivets are uh, all lined up here and uh, that's the reason I left this length on uh, this leg as well because uh, we're going to be placing that through that uh, little hole there and soldering it on from uh, the back side there but what we're going to do now is put this in place and uh, you can probably see I've already uh, cut away the uh, dielectric insulator here tinned up a little bit on the end here because we're going to solder that directly onto here and uh, you can see I've already put some heat shrink tubing on this side because uh, these two points are going to be quite close together we don't want them to short out so I'll be soldering here moving some heat shrink tubing up over there to uh, isolate that in place and to tidy it all up so I'm going to have to get a little bit creative with the uh, heat shrink tubing in order to cover all these elements up just to tidy them up in place but basically I'm going to fit this first over those posts screw them down and then I'm going to solder this in place and then I'm going to solder that leg around the back there. So everything's soldered up and in place now. I've got the heat shrink tube in there and it's covered up and tidied all that up uh, a little bit better. You can see here I've uh, soldered uh, this part of the antenna down onto the back here which of course because we've got this brass plate we're able to do and uh, I've just tidied it up so I'm going to give this a little bit of a spray of the uh, black matte paint that I used here just to uh, cover up any scratches and that that I uh, did uh, cutting this off but uh, there's one last thing that I want to do just to tidy these two uh, solder points up a little bit more now to just finish it off and uh, tidy it up a little bit I've got some epoxy putty here and I quite like this epoxy putty it uh, sets really hard in about uh, six to eight minutes but it's already a uh, pretty dark colour so it'll blend in quite nicely I'm just going to place that over those solder points and then try and shape it a little bit and you can shape this epoxy putty and smooth it off and get it really nice just with your fingers and to stop it sticking to your fingers is uh, if you just wet the ends of your fingers with a little bit of isopropanol alcohol you can smooth it off quite nicely so let's give this a uh, scan then we've got the double biquad on the left and the single biquad on the right between the two the single biquad operates at around 9 dbi and the double biquad around 11 to 12 dbi so now that it's settled down a little bit you can see that the double biquad has picked up more access points but if you look at the access points that both antennas have picked up you can kind of see uh, especially in the ones that are a little bit further away uh, the double biquad is uh, a few percentage above the single biquad and that's you know the db difference isn't great between the two but you can see that it is performing as it should uh, with around uh, a five percentage difference between some of those access points and that's uh, the 11 dbi 
uh, the about a three or four dBi advantage it has over the single bi quad. So it's another reason why the bi quad is one of my favourite antennas. It's easy to build, and you do get uh, you know a lot of performance from one of these bi quad antennas. And uh, if you ever got building one, I don't think you'd be disappointed. So not a bad performing uh, double bi quad then and uh, this particular design I do like this uh, design I mean normally I would have made a few of these got the uh, design uh, you know more dialed in before I shot a video but I don't think there's much that I would change with this I mean uh, if I was going to make these to sell I'd probably uh, you know you don't have to have this brass so wide you could probably get away with the brass being uh, half the width that it is there I uh, will probably make the uh, the copper tube in here a little bit longer just so it sticks out a little bit more to give a bit more strain relief but uh, you know it performs really really well and uh, I think it's quite a uh, snazzy design as well and definitely something that I could uh, make up uh, pretty quickly you know once I got uh, dialed in with the uh, design and the method of uh, designing something like this and making it uh, on mass I mean that's uh, something else entirely to uh, get the method down but um, you know I'm, I'm quite happy with this I think I will order, order some more of the tube in here and uh, make a few more put them on eBay and see how uh, well they go but uh, I mean the double bi quad is one of my favorite antennas so what I'll end up doing with this now is uh, completely deconstructing it and I will use this as a uh, template then to uh, make another one just to uh, you know see how long it takes me to uh, make one of these without uh, having the camera turned on because having the camera turned on does uh, add quite a lot to the length of time it does take to make something like this so I will deconstruct it all as I say use everything as a template and uh, make another one off camera uh, just to test the uh, method of construction and uh, see how long it takes me but uh, if you did enjoy the video, please uh, give it a uh, thumbs up. Any ideas what I could do to uh, change this and make it a little bit more simpler to make, you know, please drop them below in the comments. And uh, hopefully you'll join me on the next one.